What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash malicious compliance. Alright, this story's called, STDs are cheaper than PhDs. I work for a company that, among other things, does security testing and verification of hardware that has strict security requirements. Think payment terminals or chips in credit cards or set-top boxes. Given this is a niche market and requires a lot of expertise, expensive equipment, and knowledge, our rates are high. The day rate for me could buy you an entire weekend with a high-class escort, as the client in this story once told me. But we have a stellar reputation in the industry industry to go above and beyond for clients and are still cheaper than your product shipping late or never. Most customers understand this. Large and established clients know the costs and don't ever mention it to me. I have to check with the account manager to see how much he sold me for this time around. But we also serve smaller clients, startups or smaller companies that move into manufacturing or designing custom components or products that require our services as well. The company in question was a small company company in Korea that made most of their money with a few legacy components used in alarm systems, among other things. They had a monopoly on these components because larger manufacturers had since moved on because for them, the economics did not make sense anymore. The smaller company had made it work for a few years longer, but already saw the end coming and started working on a new version of the component. Problem was that most of their capable staff had since left and the product they had been designing for the past year was in itself an achievement for how broken and insecure it was. Huh, <laughs> like my wife, kidding, I'm not married. But the owner of the company, who was the grand architect of this masterpiece, did not see it that way. This product was great and would pass all certifications and allow his company to rake in cash for another 20 years. I didn't know any of this going in. The account manager sold me on a run-of-the-mill job. Upon first day of review of the product, I found so many simple issues that I stopped the review and sat down with the clients and the account manager to talk about changing the assignment to better serve their needs and make them actually pass certification on the first try. This often happens with smaller clients that don't always know the process to certification and find themselves lost in the process and the strict requirements. We generally take a more practical approach to help them out. As their end goal is certification, it makes sense to focus on solving the issues instead of spending two weeks on a report stating they have issues. While at first he was open to it and we changed two weeks of testing and reporting to me helping them get things sorted, that way they might be able to hit their deadline with a more secure, albeit lower rated component. But he quickly invited himself into every conversation I had with an engineer, as he was the grand architect, and belittled me continuously. Most ending with sexist remarks. I've learned to ignore the occasional comment by men in my field by now, sometimes being witty and fast enough to sling a hurtful comment back to them. But the grand architect of sexism actually started getting under my skin by how often he did in just one 20 minute conversation. Surely continuously being sexist must even wear him out, right? Halfway during the week, he suddenly brought in a potential new customer while I was working. Not having met mentioned it to me. I think because the company I work for is well known in the industry, he tried to put me on the spot with the customer to tell him how secure the product is, thinking the situation would make me just say the product was great to not create an incident. I said to come back later because I am doing very time sensitive testing and they luckily never came back. If he had pushed it, I would have probably said something to the effect of, secure? Not at all. That's why I am here. I cannot lie about findings. It's my reputation and consequences be damned. At the end of the week, we had an update meeting, and Mr. Sexist only now told me that he changed his mind. He wanted nothing changed to product anymore. Me gone and a report on his desk by the next week he can share with the certification body. He was able to get an earlier slot for a view and was gonna use it. The product was fine, and he was done with me. After a short argument with me staying professional and trying to tell him he was only going to pass at a barely medium level with the fixes we put in over the the last week. He told me that would be fine enough and to shut my mouth. I was a jerk 
a, a mean woman, whatever, who talked too much and knew nothing of this field, he was already in for 40 years. During the conversation, saying that the escort he slept with two weekends ago was cheaper than my day rate, and she actually satisfied him. I had heard this one before, so without thinking, I told him something to the effect of, STDs are cheaper than PhDs. He lost it and told me I was to write the required report for certification on the current product and nothing else. He did not want to see me at the office anymore. I said, sure, I will send you an official request to provide me the document documents. Be sure you upload them as soon as you can so I can get on with it and you'll get the report in the mail before end of the day Friday next week. Unbeknownst to him, the fixes I put in over the week only existed in files on the local notebooks of the engineers. Most companies have proper version tracking and syncing software and workplace rules in place to handle this, but this company didn't and only one engineer had added the changes to the main design documents during the week. So the official documents that got sent to my company that evening were the files from before I had added fixes with the engineers with only two minor fixes that made it in, but were insignificant in the slew of issues in this product. Normally I would double check with the client and inform them about missing documents and the like, but he had clearly said in the email that these were the correct files. Sure, you say so. Enter my malicious compliance. I wrote the report based on the current document documentation, but every item on the checklist would color red with a big fat fail in the results column. He got his report on Friday and within the hour was on the line with my account manager, who I had told everything. He had his own issues with the clients and he was on board with me because he knew me for years and I had a stellar record with dozens of his other clients. And he basically told him that his attitude caused review problems and he himself had insisted these were the correct files he wanted review. In the weeks after, there were some threats about lawsuit, but with us backing out on helping them further, given non-payment and the threat of lawsuits, his company never put out the product and two months later was bought for cheap by one of our other clients in part of a talent acquisition. The employees were fine engineers, they just did not have the particular skill set they needed for this component. The client who bought them paid our outstanding bills without any issue. After making use of our connections there, got them to sell us the rights and design documents for this particular component in exchange for a week of training. It had no value to them, and given the cost of our training, it was a bargain as far as they were concerned. As broken as the product was, it was too good to pass up for training purposes because of the myriad of basics in it. I had already written half the training material in the report for it anyway. I still give training from time to time with it detailing all the wrong ways of doing things. Damn OP, um, that's how you know you've made it in life, alright? You were compared to a blue chip prostitute. That's, that's making it right there. And you were compared to the price, basically. And you cost more than them. Insane. Good job. No, seriously, like, that's crazy. Alright, this story's called, The cheerleaders can break dress code because their school uniforms? Guess I'm wearing mine. Someone's story about their friend wearing a skirt to school and getting bloomers reminded me of my own malicious compliance in high school. Way back in 2013, I was a sophomore in high school, and there was a tradition that on Fridays, the cheerleaders, football players, without their pats of course, band members, and the other groups performing wore their uniforms to class. Class. This wasn't a written tradition, and only the cheerleaders and dance team's uniforms broke dress code. Nobody really batted an eye to it. I wasn't a skirt person, but I liked dresses once in a while. As one can tell by my user, I grew up in Texas, and it's still significantly hot in August and September. So one time while wearing a casual sundress in September, ooh, I was pulled out. I like sundresses. I was pulled out of class and reprimanded because the end of my dress was four inches above the knee when the dress code said no shorter than two. I pointed out the cheerleaders and dance team uniforms every Friday and how they reached mid-thigh at their longest, but was told that was okay because students can wear official school uniforms and was sent home to change. Clearly, somehow, someone had forgotten I was on the golf team. Immediately, my mind was turning to the next Friday. The school had recently upgraded the golf team uniforms the year prior 
and the girls team uniform consisted of a short sleeve collared polo shirt and a skirt. If you don't know what a skirt is, it's essentially a skirt in short shorts combined. It looks like a skirt, but they essentially act like built-in bike shorts. And these lovers were short. I'd argue shorter than the average cheerleader skirt. So that next Friday, about three days later, to my parents' surprise, I was ready to go that morning in my golf uniform, as compared to taking a bag to keep the clothes in to change into after school. But I just said, uh, Fridays we can wear our uniforms to class. And they accepted that without question and took me to school. Well, by second period, I was sent to the office yet again. And the first thing the assistant principal asked me was why I would deliberately disobey her right after our last conversation and threatened in-school suspension. I'll never get anywhere in life by not listening, yada, yada, yada. When I finally had a chance to get a word in, I said, but this is my school golf uniform. And I pointed to our school's logo that was sewn into my polo shirt. You said students can wear official school uniforms to class. Why are cheerleader uniforms okay and mine isn't? This isn't even a skirt. It's a skort. It has pants. I still remember how pissed off she was. She stared me down for what seemed like a millennium. Then she snapped and told me to get out of her office and go sit in the lobby area. That I knew what she meant and she would be calling my parents about this blatant disrespect. So I waited and played on my iPod and chatted with the nice secretary, trying to keep myself distracted because in reality, I had been really trying not to cry. I had massive anxiety when it came to authority, but I still had my naive sense of injustice and I didn't just want to let this go. After about 20 minutes, she popped her head out and in a very monotone voice, told me I could go back to class and let the teachers know I had gotten permission from the front office to wear my uniform. Uniform. Then she went back in and closed the door before I could even think to respond. I spent the rest of my day dealing with teachers questioning me about my outfit and one or two calling the front office to double check my claim that I had in fact gotten permission and went to practice after school as normal before being carpooled back home. My dad met me at the front door with a small smirk and I asked him what in the world happened because I knew he was the go-to contact for my school. So I knew knew she called him. He explained that when she called and tried to get him to come to the school and get me and talked about punishments for my insubordination, he immediately began to argue with her and admitted he raised his voice quite a bit, asking why I wasn't allowed to wear my sport uniform that the school provided to me as a dress requirement at my golf practice and mentioned taking this all the way to the school board and resolving this obvious favoritism. He then asked me not to do that again, but that he was proud of me and told me, I know I had told you never to start a fight, but to always fight back. I always thought physically, but you damn sure took the advice. Edit, I'm sorry for hurting my fellow 20-somethings with the reminder that 2013 was eight years ago. I know, that freaking hurt me too. Please don't look for gray hairs in the mirror for too long. Edit too, an even deeper apology for my 30 to 60 year olds who I offended even further with my edit. <laughs> OP, you freaking funny person. I dig it. You freaking showed that stupid assistant principal. Oh my god. Also, where'd you go to school? I went to school at Montgomery. I have no feelings toward it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's the best school in Texas because it's the only high school I went to. It's the only school in Texas I went to. Unless you count when I was a little bait before I moved to Oklahoma, Colorado. Anyway, good job sticking it to the man, or in this case, the woman. All right, this story's called, Can I Get an A for That Assignment? Back in the late 1999s, there's only one 1999, you silly. My son wasn't doing extremely well in his senior history class. Neither was I, probably because I was just born. <laughs> they were studying the 1950s for the next few weeks. The teacher said if they came dressed up in 50s attire on a specific day, they could get an A for the chapter. My son said, if I dress up in a poodle skirt with the full outfit, Outfit, can I get an A for the six weeks? The teacher said, I'd like to see that. I'd give you an A for the semester. Teacher didn't know my son wasn't joking. He came home, told me what was said. I made a trip to the fabric store right then. I whipped up that pink poodle skirt, got a short sleeve white shirt, some white calf length socks he could turn into bobby socks, and pulled out my mother's genuine 50s chiffon scarf out of the costume box and he was set. 
My son showed up at school the designated day, strutted into the school and received some looks. Now he's six foot four inches tall, muscular. The average height in his school is like five foot four. Not one student gave him heck. Some started to, but he said if they weren't smart enough to take advantage of that loophole, well, he didn't want to hear it. The teacher told him that he didn't think my son would really do it. My son said, well, you don't really know me, do you? He got his A for the semester. The vice principal tried to get him to go home and change because he might get beat up. It was 2 p.m. and school got out one hour later at 3 p.m. Right. My son told the vice principal he had been wearing the poodle skirt for the past six hours and didn't he think if anyone would have an issue with him, they would have already made it known? Whatever. The next year, his friend said the school changed the student handbook and made sure boys couldn't wear skirts. Ugh. I guess my son could have worn his kilt then, right? <laughs> The, he made them change the stupid handbook? Oh my, oh, okay. Well, I can't wait for like in 10 years when nobody just cares at all what anyone wears. Like if you wanna wear a skirt to school, then wear a skirt to school. If you're a dude, if you're a chick, if you're either or both or neither. <laughs> Just wear what you want, man. Like, at first, like, a few years ago, I would have been like, ew, girl clothes, boy clothes. But, like, honestly, the lines are getting blurred. There's, like, I mean, there are still very obviously guy clothes and girl clothes, but, like, the line is quickly blurring, and we could all agree on that. But anyway, freaking mad respect to OP's son. What a badass. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.